So last week when I was out in Wisconsin, I took a couple of pretty hard slams, banged up my wrist pretty good. So this week, trying to stay off of it, do something a little more low impact, make sure this thing heals up quickly so I can get back to doing what I love to do. So what do you do when you want to skate, but you don't want to take all the normal slams that you normally would? Well, that's where big wheels come back into play. I know a lot of us kind of abandon the big wheel thing, go to aggressive and never look back, but there's been more of a movement you know, we're all getting older, want to do something that's less hard on your body and you still want to enjoy skating and big wheels are coming back. And I tell you what, they're a ton of fun. And a few weeks ago, I was down in Raleigh. I picked up these Compass 90 millimeter wheels and I was looking forward to using them almost immediately. But you know, then winter came in and it never seemed to leave. But finally, the weather's been getting better. I'm beaten up, so I'm not going to aggressive skate. I've got the perfect opportunity to use these. Now, as you can see, I didn't just get 90 millimeter Compass wheels. I also have these Sam Croft's 110 undercover wheels. And why is that? Well, I have this package that I've been sitting on for about two months now, and I'm super excited to open this. All right, guys, and there you have it, the endless 90 millimeter frames. Uh, if you don't know about these frames, they've been out for a little while. There are already a bunch of uh, reviews out there, so probably not gonna do a full review on these uh, because everything seems to be positive about them. And even just holding them in my hand here, you can tell these are quality, quality products. I mean, you know, you just hold something and you can just feel it. This thing is sturdy as can be, made out of really nice materials. But a basic once over, uh, they're made to do either a four by 90 with a slight rocker to make them more maneuverable or a three by 110 with a long, stable, flat wheelbase for those long cruises you wanna do. But that is enough talking about these for now. I'm gonna get these set up on the uh, old FR boots here and we're gonna hit the trail. And I'll save you guys some time, we'll just do some movie magic here. All right, all set, ready to go. Man, these things look fun. Side note, I don't know who made the call to make the official Sunday brunch laces as long as a football field, but it's a little overkill. They look sick, but it's a little overkill. All right, so doing wheel slides is probably the best feeling thing you can possibly do on skates. But for those of you who don't know, doing it on brand new wheels is not the move. So you need to break them in. So the plan for today, I'm gonna do like a little three mile skate, break these wheels in, and then we'll get into some slides, some stair bashes, all the fun stuff. So far, these things are exactly as advertised, exactly like everyone else says. Uh, the 4x90 feels really stable for cruising, but also nice and nimble and responsive whenever you want to turn, have a little fun, which got a nice little spot here. Play around for a minute, have some fun with this. These wheels are just about broken in, so let's start playing around with the features down here at the point in Pittsburgh and uh, see if I remember how to do wheel slides from last year.
these frames have been super fun so far. Nice and stable when you need it, but also really nimble and agile when you need to move around. Keeps them really light and fun underneath your feet. Uh, wheel slides, parallel slides are still as terrifying as ever for me, but absolutely worth the risk because honestly, it is the best feeling trick to do on skates, aggressive or not aggressive. It's just like the most basic, natural, fun feeling. Definitely look into getting some big wheels and learning how to do parallel slides if you haven't. But it is time for me to get out of here, so we're gonna throw the 110s on, see how these things perform in the, uh, the big wheel cruising mode. So that was actually my first two sessions on the endless frames. Uh, you guys might have noticed, but that first session I was having a really rough day. I wound up, I forgot my wheels initially, had to go back to the house, and then at one point I ripped my pants and my car key fell out of my pocket. I didn't even notice till later. I wound up skating double the distance when I was trying to look for my keys later. Luckily someone turned them into the cops. It was a rough day. But got back out there, I had a genuinely fun time skating on all this stuff, so uh, Let's talk about some of these products. And we'll start off with the compass wheels. Wasn't really sure what to expect from these, expected good things, and uh, was not disappointed. I'll be honest, when I first started rolling them, uh, I also have the 50-50 bearings in them, and they rolled a little slow at first, but I think it's just that sealed bearings take a little bit longer to break in, and uh, the bearings were a little slow to begin with, but now that I've got a few more miles on them, uh, they coast really well, they feel really smooth. Uh, the wheels have plenty of grip and feel really good on slides. Got them dialed in there now, and uh, yeah, solid wheel, especially for the price. And as far as the undercovers go, if you've ever skated undercover wheels, I mean, you know they are just quality wheels, so absolutely no surprises there. These feel great. Uh, they're a little hard, but I think that's so that they're better at slides, but with the long wheelbase on the 3 110 I'm not going to be doing slides on them, so the roads feel a little rough. It might be nice to go to like an 85A for a cruiser wheel, but the 88 still feels nice and rolls a little faster. But this video isn't about wheels, it is about these frames. And so what do I have to say about these frames? Well, for starters, I'm typically a big believer in, you know, one tool, one job. And when you get into mixing things, it typically doesn't work out well. But these things perform so well, it feels like two really good, completely different frames between the two setups. It doesn't feel like one decent frame with kind of a crappy gimmick. It feels like two really solid and completely different frame setups. The 4x90 felt like a really short wheelbase, like just incredibly nimble when you want it to be. But then the 90mm wheels give you tons of coast, tons of speed if you want it. It's really fun for doing all your slides and your swivels and whatever all the wizard terms are, I don't even know. But it was an absolute blast skating it. And then you've got your cruiser setup, your 3x110, and this thing feels so different. It is like you were on rails, just 100% stable, tons of power transfer, all of the coast. It feels incredible. When you want to put some miles in, this setup feels incredible. So I don't really have a ton to say about these frames that hasn't already been said by other people. And anything I would say, it's going to be positive. Might only gripe with these frames and I understand why they did it because it would absolutely drive the cost of manufacturing up and the final product would be more money and this is an incredibly affordable frame for what you get but it is not two separate frames it's they're not mirrored it's two of the same exact frame so the uh, the race axles are on the same side so when you want to switch the wheels if you keep your skates on on your left skate, the hex bolts are on the inside of your skate, and then on your right skate, they're on the outside, which makes changing the setups with your skates on your feet a little bit more of a hassle, still very doable, but it would be easier if they were both on the inside just from, you know, the way your legs bend. But again, I totally understand why they did this. It keeps this frame very affordable. I want to say these are about 200 bucks, and for what you're getting, it's an incredible price. You are getting two 
very good frames out of this deal. And uh, if that's the only negative about it is that changing the wheels can be slightly more difficult because of having to bend your legs and it's only when the skates are on your feet then they've done a phenomenal job with these. Now, I'm not a big wheel guy, so I don't know much, and this video is not sponsored by Endless. Although if you guys see this, uh, those pink ones will look really good on my wife's uh, twisters here. Give me a shout. But I have had a ton of fun on these, so if you're into big wheels or looking into getting big wheels, and you want to have a variety of setups, have some fun on some nimble, slidey, spinny frames, and then also want to put in some miles on the trail, get yourself in shape. I highly recommend these things. All right, that does it for this week. I will see you guys next time. And until then, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Goodbye.